All right, this video is a follow-up to the first video I made about using Powtoon Studio. Today I want to show you a new feature of Powtoon, which would be Powtoon Slides. So I'm back at that main screen that I started at, at Powtoon, again, just by going to Create and clicking over to my Powtoon. So that takes me to my Powtoon dashboard. When I'm at my Powtoon, if I click on Dashboard up at the top, It's going to take me to a different screen. This screen shows that I have either studio options or I have slide options. The slide options are what I want to show you today. So if I click over to slides, I have the option here to create a new slides project. A slides project is slightly easier than a Powtoon Studio because they've done a lot of the animation and pre-work for you. You're just going to choose the things that you want to put into your presentation. So if I use create, it's going to open up for me my options for a or a Powtoon Slides presentation. Now, the difference between Powtoon Studio and Powtoon Slides is in order to use Powtoon Slides, you're going to want to choose a template. So in Powtoon um, Studio, I typically suggest to students that they just start from scratch. But in Powtoon Slides, you're going to need to choose a template of what you'd like your show to look like. So we have some options here. We have the suitcase journey. By mousing over it, it's going to show me some ideas of what those slides are going to look like. Classic, Apple, Cooler Hip, This is the Edge, Photo Show, Edge Business, Mr. Show, and scrolling down. Ones that say coming soon um, are coming, but they aren't available to us as of yet. What I really like is this Mr. Show. So I'm going to use him. I'm going to click Go, and it's going to make a new Powtoon presentation for me in slides. Notice it's telling me that it's loading in slides. What it's doing is instead of loading all those animation options along the side, it's loading pre-made slide options. So it already has the animation and the placeholders in there. You're just going to fill in your information into the template that it already has. It takes some of the searching work out of looking through Powtoon Studio where you're searching on the side for exactly what animations you might want to add. This is going to have them all on the slides ready to go so that you can focus more on what you're putting into your presentation and less on designing all the specifics of the presentation. It takes just a little bit to load because it's loading all those options for you. There we go. Alright, so you'll notice that Powtoon Slides looks a little bit different than Powtoon Studio. We don't have that big sidebar over here where it's showing us all the different things we can add. Instead, every time we add a slide, we have three options of what we're adding. We're either adding a text option, a video or image option, or just an animation option. When I add the text options, by scrolling over the text options, I can see what that slide's going to look like. By clicking the arrow on the side, if it was active, I could see what other options I have. For this, we only have six options for each of the categories. Depending on the template you pick, you might have more options in a given category. So if I'm in my text options, this might be a good way to start. So if I click this slide, it's going to add it to my presentation. It tells me here that I should put the title of my presentation. This is a sample. Trying out how to. The great thing about using Powtoon Slides is that all of the other features are already in here. So this guy is already animated. The screen pulling down is already animated. Everything is already set to go. So if I click play, it's going to show me what my presentation would look like. This character is going to run in, it's going to zoom out a little bit, the slide is going to come down, and these things are going to pop up. When I pick my next slide, again, those options are going to pop up. Maybe I'll do this one so I can put in a longer text. This is a space for a longer text. This is so much fun. Again, 
It tells me what to do, and now all the animations are in there. So now if I go back to my first slide and play my presentation, my character runs in, my slide comes down, we start. And here's my second slide. He answers the phone and he has this conversation. I do have some customization options within um, Powtoon slides, so I can change some of the text options up here. I can make my text a little bit bigger. I could choose a different font for it to be in. I could choose a different color for that font to be, and I could choose to center it. Um, I can do bullets and numbered lists. But you'll notice that the options are much, much fewer. This was a really good starting point for my students when we started using Powtoon because they didn't have to worry about finding all of the animation features and scrolling through all those different options on the side. All they're doing is picking a slide. Say I want to put in some pictures on a slide. I choose one of these image options. It does the animation for me, and then I'm worried about the information I'm putting in. So now I can worry about putting in the proper pictures, there we go, putting in my Apple pictures, I can add my captions in, these are apples, and another image, And one more. Notice I can scale my image so that more of it fits in there. I might have to shrink it down a little bit to get it all into the frame that I have here. I could also rotate it because this frame is... Oops. is more vertical. Again, when I play that slide, it's all pre-animated. These are already timed to come in at separate times. So Powtoon Slides is a great place to start for kids and for teachers who are just getting used to Powtoon um, because it takes a lot of the animation guesswork out of it. When I'm done with my Powtoon slides, there's a couple things I can do. First of all, Powtoon is tricky because it's not like Google Drive where it saves automatically. So reminding students that they need to save their work frequently is really important, especially before closing out. If there's more editing work that I want to do, or if I want to work with it or add different characters to it, I can export it to the Powtoon Studio. So I can take all the work that I did here and put it, um, transport it into Powtoon Studio, which will give us some other options. You can't go backwards once you've done that. So I think it tells us once I click on this, you're about to open in Powtoon Editor, um, and it will move it from your slides to your Powtoon Editor instead. You can't then go back. You can't take it back from the Powtoon Editor back to the Powtoon Slides. So you really need to make sure that you've finished all the Powtoon Slide work you want to finish first before you move it into the editor. You can also preview what this is going to look like. So I can click through my slides. And this is showing me what it's going to look like when I actually give this presentation. Now one thing that Powtoon Slides doesn't allow us to do is to remove those holds that are in there. So you'll notice that in order to go to each new slide, I need to click the next button at the bottom. If I wanted my Powtoon to play a little bit more like a movie, I would have to put it in Powtoon Studio and remove the holds. I can show you that in a minute. My other option is to publish. By publishing your Powtoon, you're saying that you're done with it. You'll need to select a category. I typically just do school. You'll need to title your Powtoon. You can put in a description if you want and any tags. We can't keep our Powtoons private unless we buy the premium one, so we're going to go ahead and publish. When we publish, it's going to open it on a new page for us and tell us that our presentation has been published so that we can share it with the world. 
This is typically the link that I would have students give me. So if I was having them turn something in, once they publish it, they copy this link at the top and they can drop it in the form or on our Google Classroom. You could also have them email it to you. You could share yours out on Facebook or um, Twitter or on your Google Plus account. If I go back, I'm going to show you how you could have it play a little bit more like a movie. So if you are all done with all the work that you want to do in your Powtoon Studio, but you want it to just play completely through. So instead of having to click each slide, you want it to just play continuously. We're going to put it in the Powtoon Studio, remembering that we can't go backwards once we've done this. So our Powtoon, once we've edited it in Powtoon Studio, is no longer um, able to be edited in Powtoon Slides. So here we are. Now it looks just like the studio that we had before, so I'd have more options again. I could add other characters to my presentation. So maybe I want to have that student appear that I like to use. He's running away from the work. So now my student's in there as well. What you'll notice is when I go to each slide, there's this red hold button. The hold is what's stopping it from playing continuously all the way through. So in order to get rid of that, I just need to click the hold down at the bottom. I'm going to have to go through each slide and do this. So it's going to remove the hold from each slide of my Powtoon. Now when I go back and play my Powtoon from the beginning, it's going to play continuously, noticing that it's not stopping at any point as there's no hold on the screen going to play a little bit more like an animated movie. So in this way, students can create their own animations with the words and the pictures that they've chosen to use. Just like Powtoon Slides, when I'm done, I'm going to use this Publish button. I'm going to have to make the same choices, and then I can click Publish to the web. Once I click play now, it's going to play continuously all the way through because I've taken out the holds from the presentation. So instead of having to click through down on the bottom, everything's going to run smoothly from slide to slide. You could choose to leave some holds in there if you were, say, giving a mini lesson and you wanted it to play for a while and then you wanted it to stop so that you could talk about something. Um, you could leave some of the holds in there and then you could click play again and it would start back up. Again, important to remember that we're using the Save button in Powtoon to always know where our Powtoons are and to save the work that we've done. If we ever want to find that Powtoon, when I go back to Powtoon and click back to my dashboard, here's the Powtoon that I just published, and here's the Powtoon slides that I just made. You can see that I publish it because republish is an option. This one I made right here doesn't have um, republish as an option, which means I haven't published that yet. I think that wraps up Powtoon. Most important things to remember would be that you have two options, studio and slides. I would suggest if you're just getting started using the slides, if you want to push yourself a little bit using the studio, and then just remember to always save. I would hate for you to lose all your hard work.